Feel the waves cut through me Hypnotized By the sounds I'm breathing in Hold tight, hold tight Can't make coast collide Hold tight, hold tight Hold tight Hey, what's up guys? Welcome back. You're watching Full Take. Custom ROM development for the Nord 2 is really going well and finally Sakil Mondol and team has made available first official build of Android 13 base project LHZ ROM for the OnePlus Nord 2. Pixel S Friends first build base on the Android 13 was also released few days back but today in this video we will see the project LHZ ROM. Remember you must revert back to the stock Oxygen S11 if you are on any official build of Oxygen S12. As I am on the Oxygen S12 C10, I flashed the rollback package as shown in the iCard video and I am using the Oxygen S11 A19 with the TWRP installed on my phone. If you are any custom ROM then you can directly flash this via TWRP. First boot to the TWRP, only use the TWRP version given in the video description. If you are not on the latest version of TWRP, then first flash it via fastboot. Download the full ROM zip file which has the GFC in bit. Now boot your phone in the TWRP using the ADB commands or use the advanced reboot menu if you are on the custom ROM. Now transfer the ROM zip file in internal storage. Then tap install, flash the ROM, then format data. Once done, tap reboot to the system. So today in this video we will see what's working in this new Android 13 based ROM, its performance, its features and finally I discuss some bugs. So you can decide whether to use this ROM as a daily driver or not with my final verdict. Now without further ado, let's get started. On a new adventure. On a new adventure. So we booted to the project Elixir Amazing Boot Animation. After completing the initial setup, we booted to the Pixel Launcher. As the project Elixir is fully based on the Pixel ROM, we get all the working feature of Pixel devices. Now let's jump to the about phone. Once we go to the settings app, so we see it has the one new one you are like dual theme. In the about phone, you can see this is the Android 13 based ROM with the new steric, which can be accessible after dialing the clock to the one. Security patch is of 5th October 2022. This is the project Elixir version number 3.2. ROM comes with the kernel version 4.19.290, built date with the Proton Clang 2 Gen 13. Kernel is enforcing, build date of ROM is 14th October 2022. As this is the initial build, so we need to first check all the basic functionalities. Non-working things will be discussed at the end of the video in the bug section. Wi-Fi is working good, it's connecting the network without issues and the Wi-Fi calling option is also available in the network setting. Wi-Fi hotspots are also working good, Bluetooth is working and is connecting with the Bluetooth devices with the HD audio working. Here you can see both the audio in the my Oppo Ecno M31 and the audio in the speakers are also working very good. By default ROM is supporting the SBC ACC codex along with the device specific codex like the LDAC, Qualcomm, APTX etc. NFC is working in the ROM, GPS is working and it has the precise location detection. Under display fingerprint is working without the issue of the high brightness and it's working fast enough. Let's check out the camera application. ROM has the default camera app which has the portrait mode working. It has the snapchat emojis inbuilt in the camera application. It has the translate feature inbuilt but other features like the slow motion, time lapse, nightscape all are missing here. So I installed the Google Gcam MGC build. It has most of the feature working but some features are still not working. Like the nightscape mode is working, portrait mode for the both the front and the back camera are working good. In the video recording slow motion is still not working, it's causing the force close of camera application. Time lapse is working good, video stabilization settings are available and they are partially working. Panorama mode and the photosphere both are working good. Camera has all the advanced features including the HDR and HDR plus mode. But the video recording lacks the 4K 60fps recording. Wide angle cameras are now working only for the ultra wide mode setting of 0.4, but it's causing the force close at 0.9 setting. So the camera is quite good, but still it has some major issues as we discussed earlier. Incoming and the outgoing HD calling is working with the recording functionality, and you can find all the recordings in the recording folder of Fine Manager. 
ROM comes with the Google Unlimited Photo Backup. Wide One Security is on L1, so you can stream full HD content over Amazon Prime and the Netflix. ROM is passing the safety net, so you can use all the banking and the security related application without the issues. ROM data is encrypted, so no worry about the data stealing. Let's check all the sensors using the Android application. Major sensors like the accelerometer, magnetometer, proximity, gyroscope are working except the barometer which is not present in our device. Other basic functionalities like the ear proximity, ear speakers, vibration, display all are working good. On screen Hey Google voice activation is working without issues so most of the major functionalities are working but there are minor flaws that we will discuss later in the bugs part of the video. Now let's check out the features that comes with the ROM. In the setting we get the separate tab called as the essence which has all the custom features categorized in the different sections like the themes, status bar, quick setting panel etc. In the theme section we get lots of the headline or the body fonts, icon pack, signal icon styles and the Wi-Fi icon styles. In this signal icon style seems buggy, it's not getting applied even after rebooting the system or restarting the system UI. Under the lock screen we get the media cover art for the lock screen media but it's also not working. In the quick setting panel tab we get some unique and the amazing ties like the rectangle setting, outline and the classic all are giving the different look to the quick setting panel. There is a different tab for the brightness ladder customization similar to the outline style of quick setting panel. Blur media cover art in the notification is another setting that blurs the music media notification. Under the miscellaneous customization tab, we get old game space setting similar to the Oxon OS game space setting. ROM has the working wallpaper and style application which has the pixel wallpapers and the theme icon setting which is working very well. In the settings and under the system tab, we get the OnePlus tab which has smart charging control, high brightness mode, force 90 hertz toggle, advanced ambient display setting, vibration strength control. Under the display setting, we get the different color modes like the natural, boosted and the adaptive modes. There is an advanced pocket mode toggle available to save the battery because of always on display. In the lock screen setting, always on display toggle is available and the AOD is working without issues. These are some unique and the new customization we've seen as the ROM is in earlier stage of development. We didn't get the advanced features in the ROM but they will get added in the upcoming builds. Now let's discuss about the performance of the new build. ROM is super smooth and along with the force 90 hertz it will fly on your fingertips. Apps opening, closing, scrolling, all the things are absolutely stunning. After running the Geekbench test for the CPU, I got the score of 839 for the single core and 3048 for the multi-core, which is very good score. For the OpenGL GPU drivers, we got the score of 5111, which is high score I got till the date. While in the Hulkan graphics score, I still got the lower results like the old custom ROM, it's 4310. On the basis of all these scores and the actual real life user's performance of this custom ROM, on the Android 13 base is absolutely stunning. So final part of the video is the bugs and the issues in the ROM. First is the alert slider, it's not working at all, instead of that you can use the volume panel toggle to switch between the ring, vibration or the mute mode. Second is the new battery widget that shows the device and the all the connected device battery percentage is still not working like the old build of custom ROMs. Another issue is regarding the automatic brightness. When I checked the light sensor it shown that there are errors in the device firmware or the device didn't have the sensor. But actually device has the light sensor and when I actually tried to use it, it's working in the ROM but it's buggy. It's causing the high and the low brightness in the fraction of the seconds without any cause. But all these bugs are the minor except these bugs I didn't face any major issues. Battery life is still not tested. I need 2-3 to three days of battery cycle to give my final verdict for the battery performance of the ROM. Overall in the first impression everything is working fine with the minor bugs. So you can definitely use this ROM as a daily driver but before switching to the custom ROM, always take the full Android backup and save it to the PC and then proceed. That's it for today guys, if you think I help you then please do like and share this video, subscribe to the channel, press the bell icon for the notification of our upcoming content. Thanks for watching, see you next time, take care, bye bye.